Greetings fellow snowflakes. Sometimes I think we needlessly confuse things by focusing too much on words and labels. Perhaps this is why what people call social justice gets so much flack sometimes. Look, I don't really pick sides. What is important to me is truth and compassion. This is the foundation behind all of my views and although I often find myself coming down on the social justice side of things, there are also times when I can understand some of the criticisms people have towards certain ideas. Take biological sex. I think that the existence of intersex people definitely proves that biological sex is not a strict binary. In other words, you can't say people are always either biologically male or biologically female. That there are other people who exist who have one set of chromosomes but the physical anatomy of the other sex, e.g. complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, that there are people with ambiguous genitalia, and there are even people with ovotestes, gonads that have a mixture of ovary and testicular tissue. All these conditions prove that there are exceptions. People who are not entirely male or entirely female, but fall, I guess, somewhere in between. But I do think that scientifically it is probably accurate to say that the human species generally has two sexes. All the mechanisms, chromosomal or anatomical, have the function of creating male and female, two sexes. It's just that it doesn't always work out that way because nature isn't perfect. I also don't agree with the attempts by some transgender individuals to try and distance themselves from the terms male and female when they refer to biological sex. Look, biological sex is a thing, and we, so we need language to describe it so that we can talk about it. The terms man and woman refer to gender, the terms masculine and feminine refer to socially constructed gender roles and expression, the terms for biological sex are male and female. I don't see the problem in using words that way. It is important that we can still talk about biological sex when we need to, for example with regards to feminists talking about pregnancy, periods, abortion, etc. Things that affect biological females and where biological females might be treated unfairly by a patriarchal society. Having said that, I think chromosomes, although they might usually create a certain biological sex, are not the definition of a biological sex, and that when a transgender woman or a transgender man transition with hormones and surgery, they absolutely become the biological sex they want to be. A post-op trans woman is not only a woman, she is also now female, and a post-op trans man is not only a man, he, he is also now male. As for gender identity, I accept that there are those whose neurology may be intermediate between male and female. I accept that there are those who don't fit into the categories of man or woman and their gender identity is more complex than that. I absolutely believe in the need to allow non-binary individuals some kind of gender-neutral way to be in society, where they don't get gendered as men or women and their non-binary gender identity can be officially recognised. But counting genders is, I believe, misguided. It only confuses people and makes them hostile. Plus, I think it is the case that some people are neurologically male, some people are neurologically female, and some people fall somewhere in between. While words and labels are an excellent way to express how you feel and explain how you make sense of your non-binary identity, I think it is possible that those who are neurologically intermediate just have different ways of describing and explaining their gender. Call yourself agender, bigender, intergender, demigirl, demiboy, gender fluid, or whatever. That's fine. But how many genders are there? Well, there are men, women, and those whose gender identity is more complex or indeterminate than that. I don't think counting 76 genders or whatever helps. Socially and legally, it makes the most sense to say that there are three genders. Those we call he, those we call she, and those we call they, or whatever other gender-neutral uh, pronoun we can all agree on. That's simple. People can wrap their heads around that, which makes it a better strategy for gaining acceptance. I've realised a strange fact about myself, and it shows the danger of getting too hung up on words and labels. In practical terms, I am a trans woman, but philosophically, I am non-binary. I don't know if it's accurate to call it Buddhist exactly, but I have what I like to think of as a Buddhist deta detachment from words and labels. These are external and slightly illusionary things, really, words we make up to describe things. 
Real social progress happens when we realise that men and women are more similar than different, that we shouldn't impose unnecessary gender roles and stereotypes on each other, and we can and should reach out a hand of friendship to each other. That's why non-binary folks rock. They are people saying, I'm not going to play that game, I'm just a human being who happens to be physically male, or female, or intersex. And I feel this way often. I've decided to stop worrying about how male or female I appear to be. I'm just me. I'll do my best to express myself authentically, and I have my own transgender needs, which I'll come to in a minute. But you know what? I don't have to fit into your narrow idea about what I should be. There are many times when I think, isn't gender just a load of bollocks, really? Society pushes all these concepts and meanings onto me that don't necessarily have anything to do with what's really going on, or my own experiences. So fuck that. In many ways, the problem with the whole idea of gender identity, this what-you-think-you-are thing, is that the words and concepts we use about gender are very much affected by our own personal philosophies about gender, what we think those words mean. So it's not necessarily very illuminating to reflect on what you think you are. But I do have complex feelings about my own anatomy, feelings that only hormones and electrolysis or laser hair removal can fix. I do find that I prefer to be referred to with female words and pronouns rather than male words and pronouns. And if it's a choice between feeling comfortable and honoured rather than continually annoyed and irritated, then only social and legal transition can fix that. And I do feel a weird kind of kinship with women, a desire to see a woman when I look in the mirror, and a tendency to look up to and want to emulate certain inspiring women, whether fictional or real, that I very rarely if ever experience with regards to men. And all of that means that I'm genuinely transgender and would benefit from transitioning. So that's it really, an insight and an update to what I've been thinking with regards to gender. And talking of updates, the assessment process with the gender clinic is now complete. I've been given leaflets and information about hormones, a recommendation to get checked out by the doctor before I go on hormones, and also information about facial hair removal and a discussion about whether I want surgery. So things are moving forwards. So hopefully I'll begin my physical transition soon. I'm happy about that, especially since I learned that the first few electrolysis or laser hair treatments on my face will be on the NHS so I won't have to pay for them. That makes me so, so, so happy. <laughs> anyway, we're all different, we're all special. Snowflakes unite.